Alex Oda was born in Jifna, Palestine in 1944 into a tightly knit religious family that followed the Catholic faith. He had eight brothers and sisters. One of his brothers became a priest and one of his sisters became a nun. After high school, Alex moved to Egypt to attend college at Cairo University, where he received his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science in 1967. In December of 1972, Alex immigrated to the United States, where he entered the master's degree program in political science at California State University, Fullerton. In 1975, he was able to return to his hometown of Jifna, where he fell in love with and married Norma Gattas, who returned with him to the United States. Alex continued his studies, and in 1978, he earned his master's degree in political science. That same year, Norma and Alex's first daughter, Helena, was born. They had two more daughters after Helena, Samia in 1980 and Susan in 1984. By 1982, Alex had joined the staff of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, the ADC, founded by former Senator James Abrezik of South Dakota. Former Senator Abrezik is said to have been motivated to form the ADC because of a prevailing trend of unfair, if not grotesque, stereotyping of Arabs in the American media as being violent, horribly wealthy, or otherwise unscrupulous characters. The trend of this prejudice was unmistakable, and included the 1978 FBI sting operation codenamed Abscam, a shortened name for Abdul Scam. Denigrating images of Arab characters in print and visual media were commonplace, and the racism was evident even in entertainment programming for children. myself in the Serrera Desert, where I met the stupidest character of them all. You, Mr. Arab. Alex increasingly became active in Southern California American Arab community affairs. His generosity and compassion for justice drove him to pursue a lifestyle of service that included sponsorship of children injured by war. His outreach to Muslim, Jewish, and Christian Americans was an effort to bridge differences and create dialogues for unions that might have constructive influence for resolving the dispute between Palestinians and Israelis, trapped in political and violent conflict in his country of birth. In 1983, Alex accepted the position of ADC's West Coast Regional Director, and he carried out his duties with an inexhaustible zeal, expanding Southern California ADC membership and organizing write-in campaigns to media outlets that were believed to produce biased reporting of events associated with the conflict between Palestinians, Israel, and its Arab neighbors. By October of 1985, the ADC chapter managed by Alex was becoming known in Southern California as being a voice for the local American Arab community that had been, to date, unorganized or ignored. Calls were coming in and people wanted to know more about the Arab community that represented half the equation to the chaos seen daily in television news and read about in the print media. In the morning of October 11, 1985, Alex went to the ADC office expecting another typical day of activism on behalf of his community. There were letters to write and phone calls to make. The local ADC annual banquet was in the planning, and he was preparing for a scheduled presentation to be given at a local Jewish community center. As Alex opened the door to his Santa Ana office that morning, he couldn't possibly know that his life, the lives of his wife Norma and their three daughters, his extended family, and the associates he worked so hard to form relationships with would change forever. An act of terror right here at home in Orange County. Yes, that is the corner office of what used to be the headquarters, as you mentioned, of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, the 1900 block of 17th Street in Santa Ana, suite number 208. That is all that is left of that suite. Today, the Santa Ana office of the committee was destroyed by a bomb. Audi was killed and seven other people were injured. And some fear international terrorism may be taking root here. 
the man who was killed by that blast, Alex O'Day, age 41, married the father of three young daughters. The bomb was powerful enough to shatter glass in several other offices. The debris was everywhere, the wall was blown out, the windows were blown out, it looked like a combat zone. Today, at Western Medical Center, where O'Day died, his brother Sammy told of numerous death threats received by his brother. Uh, I don't have an idea who done it, but as I said in the past, he had received some threatening calls from people identifying themselves as J.D. Allen. And as investigators search through the rubble for clues, a short distance away, a grieved family. In a home where there is mourning, there are two sounds, the phone and crying. <laughs> Alex O'Day's family is in mourning. Alex left three daughters. Helena is seven. Samia is five. And Susan is just a year and a half. Sammy O'Day describes his brother as a peace-loving man who fled the Middle East for a better life in America. A fact, he says, that makes his death even more bitter. In the one country where freedom of speech is very much sanctioned, it's, no, it just doesn't make sense. In the meantime, President Reagan has condemned the incident, calling it heinous and has ordered federal bomb experts to assist in the investigation. The militant Jewish Defense League has denied responsibility in the bombing, but its director, Irv Rubin, told CNN on two different occasions that he sheds no tears for O'Day. He stated that apparently Alex got what he deserved, and uh, to me, I just probably this is the most cruel thing that anybody can say. Anybody can say. Nobody deserved to die that way. This was a day of mourning for the O'Day family, a day for family matters to be settled. Were it not for the fact that the office of Alex O'Day has a concrete floor and an all-glass wall, there would be nothing left. Indications are the bomb was planted here, just inside the door, possibly on a small table. The trajectory of the shrapnel seems to confirm that. It also seems to confirm that the bomb was triggered as O'Day opened the door. Investigators aren't talking for the record, but there's a consensus this was a carefully planned assassination. Carefully planned assassination. Alex Oda was killed as an American in America because we dare to speak what is for some people an unpopular truth. That Arabs are people too. That Arab Americans are Americans too. And that all Americans, all Americans are entitled to all the rights and privileges of being an American. This reprehensible crime threatens the security of all Americans everywhere and must not go unsolved. Alex O'Day's death in Los Angeles has changed us dramatically because we think that it was primarily aimed at silencing the American Arab voice. We've called for assistance from the Sheriff's Office, uh, from their crime scene investigators, from their bomb squad. We brought in the FBI and alcohol, tax and firearms to do a parallel investigation with us. So we're looking for whatever assistance we can get from anybody. Investigators have no doubt the bomb was sophisticated and large, at least 30 pounds in weight, and it was meant to kill. Oda was West Coast Regional Director of the committee. Funeral services and burial for Alex Oda are scheduled for tomorrow morning in the city of Orange. An atmosphere of tension due to extra strict security precautions surrounded the funeral services for Alex O'Day. City of Orange police took license plate numbers of every car arriving at St. Norbert's Catholic Church. Officers with binoculars stood on the roof of the church rectory looking for anything suspicious since two bomb threats were received last night. Because of the uh, circumstances surrounding this incident uh, and the crowd, we consider everything to be serious at this point. An overflow crowd listened as Reverend Jerome Karcher eulogized O'Day. O'Day is survived by his wife, Norma, and three young daughters. The Santa Ana police at the Orange County Crime Lab are still going over bomb fragments to look for clues into who killed Alexander O'Day. Still no word on that process. The FBI has also been called into the case, but they report no leads. But FBI statements to the press immediately after the bombing do not conform to information that subsequently became known in the days and years that followed. It would be impossible to cover all the information that evolved about the case over the 27 years since the bombing took place. But outstanding questions remain that are pertinent with respect to what law enforcement knew before and after Alex was killed, 
how the investigation into his assassination has been handled, and why more progress to date has failed to materialize. It wasn't long before the FBI identified the Jewish Defense League, the JDL, or associated individuals as having some kind of connection to the crime. By mid-July of 1986, nine months after the incident, the FBI was more forthcoming with public statements as to who might be responsible. Arab-American leader Alex Oda. Last year, Oda was killed in his Santa Ana office. He was the director of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee. The FBI's number two man told Congress today the bombing suspects are Jewish extremists who may be receiving help from Israel, but he would not get any more specific than that. At this point, we have insufficient credible evidence bring charges, so these individuals remain as suspects, and as such, they're, of course, entitled to, to due process and have the same constitutional rights as anyone else. So we are unable to, uh, before this body, to, to name these individuals or to even associate them with a particular group. We have characterized them as members of a Jewish extremist element, and I think that is a fair characterization. Please give us the information, give us all the details, and give us the facts. Please give us the information, give us all the details, and give us the facts. According to Robert Friedman, a journalist for the New York-based Village Voice, three individuals, Robert Manning, Keith Fuchs, and Andy Green, who had changed his name to Baruch Ben Yosef, all at one time or another associated with the JDL, were under surveillance and considered suspects within hours of the bombing attack on the Santa Ana ADC office. Friedman stated that, according to his contacts with police sources in California, Fuchs and Manning were followed by federal agents on October 10, 1985, the day before the ADC office bombing, from New York to St. Paul, Minnesota, where they changed planes for a flight to Los Angeles. But the agents lost their trail after arrival in Los Angeles. And one of those two was spotted flying out of Los Angeles at 7 a.m. in the morning, the same day the bombing took place on October 11th. Manning, Fuchs, and Green all had dual Israel-American citizenship and had taken residence in the Israeli-occupied Palestinian West Bank. According to a number of sources, Israel repeatedly rebuffed U.S. efforts to gather information about persons of interest linked to the Oda murder and other crimes committed in the United States. Israel eventually agreed to extradite Manning to the United States for murder charges in a different case on the condition he not be charged and tried for the bombing that killed Alex Oda. It's not clear if the terms of the extradition would have prohibited Manning from testifying under immunity from prosecution against others suspected of planning or carrying out the bombing attack on the ADC office that killed Alex. It's worth noting that Benjamin Netanyahu, in his first term as Israeli Prime Minister, stated in an address to the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. on January 20, 1998, that he was not familiar with extradition requests concerning the murder of Alex Oda, but that if a request was brought before him, he would, quote, look into it, unquote. So it remains a mystery as to whether the American Justice Department ever asked for extradition of suspects Andy Green, also known as Baruch Ben Yosef, and Keith Fuchs, or if they were ever questioned by American government representatives about the case. Sammy Oda, Alex's brother, stated that about seven years ago, FBI agent Mary Hogan and John Coyle, a Los Angeles Police Department coordinator with the FBI, who were both members of a joint task force on terrorism, informed him of a planned trip to Israel to gather information. But Sammy never heard back from either of them about results from that trip. Also disturbing is that journalist Jeffrey Blankford, one of several plaintiffs in a 1993 lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, disclosed that the ADL had retained the services of an informant named Roy Bullock, who received stolen documents from a San Francisco police officer and former employee of the CIA named Tom Gerard. Blankford claimed evidence in the trial showed that Bullock was in possession of a floor plan and a key to the Santa Ana ADC office that was destroyed and resulted in the death of Alex Oda. With so many questions and conflicting answers, the Justice Department of the United States must be asked to clarify the status of this investigation and provide some reasonable indication why, after 27 years, anyone can believe that their pursuit of justice in this case is ongoing 
and will continue until an arrest and conviction takes place.